back to the crown bee. I'm Lisa Greenwood, and this is number six in our Halloween series, and I have been having a blast. One of my favorite holidays. Today, we're going to be making these gorgeous, cozy, uh, no-sew pumpkins, however you can sew them. I probably going forward, since I have a serger, I'll sew mine just for longevity. Um, but glue gunning is great too, absolutely. Um, and so we're gonna start out with this gorgeous Trois de Jouis. This is one of my favorite scenes, I just love this. And this is gonna be going up into our guest room where our guests will be staying. Um, this is a beautiful mushroom. Uh, colored fabric that I covered a chair in and I love this. I love these two together. Um, and then I had upholstered a stool in this for our library and so I'm going to be using some of this gorgeous kind of rust color and I think these will go well together. So the first thing we need to do in starting out, um, you can also too, um, if you don't have fabric on hand, like this is all from past projects, go to Dollar Tree. Here's some Halloween selections that they have. You can use that 100% or go to your Joanne Fabrics. They always have just remnants that are for sale for hardly anything that they want to kind of get rid of. So that's an option too. We're going to start out by laying out our fabric and I want it single layer like such. And then you're going to get a, let me grab a piece of paper. So you're gonna grab a piece of paper. This is just scrap piece of paper. You're gonna fold it in half. And we're basically gonna make kind of like a diamond shape. Where's my little scissors at? Um, and you're gonna be coming out like this. And around we go. And this will be the pattern that we're gonna be cutting out like that. And it'll all make sense here in a minute. I'll show you here in a sec. I just kind of have been eyeballing it. So for instance, you could use your sewing pins, magnets, whatever you want. And I just roughly, I don't really want this too perfect because I want those seams rustic. And you'll see here in just two seconds. We're just gonna cut this out. This can't be any easier. Okay, so you wanna cut it out like this and you'll have something that looks like this. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse and we're gonna cut out eight of these. We're gonna do eight of those. now it is time to put our pumpkin together and you're gonna see how easy and how fast this all goes together to be truthful the time-consuming part is the cutting out um, and you'll get the hang of that really really fast what I have been doing is I do all my cutouts then I come back out and then I glue everything also too this is the shape that you're shooting for and an easy way to remember it is kind of a leaf it looks very much like a leaf you can do them more round. You could do them bigger and taller, um, which I think would make a beautiful stool, uh, maybe done in denim um, for a little kid's room, or you could do a denim pumpkin. They, the denim frays so well, and I just think those would be amazing. Um, the, you could even do it, like I said, with these remnants that you can get at Joanne Fabrics. This is Dollar Tree, but just whatever you have. Also, I thought a fun thing, it would be a great way to use your scraps up um, in your fabric room. Okay, so here we go. You can see all this glue from all these crazy projects this week. I have had so much fun, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed them too. So this is how it is. You have your one piece, your pumpkin piece, and you're going to turn him upside down. And then you're simply going to glue these you're simply going to glue them together, almost like you're making a pillow. So that think of it that way if you've ever made a pillow. However, you're just gluing one side. And this will all make sense here in a second. You'll go, aha. So many things you could apply this to. Okay, here we go. And I don't go all the way down into the tip um, of the pumpkin side. 
I and I'll show you here in a minute once we get this first one on Y. I just go almost there. Then I take this side and I'm gonna line it up. And again, don't worry about the jiggity jagging. Uh, I was very sloppy cutting these, but I did that on purpose because I want this frayed. I want these edges frayed. And then you're just gonna get that really pressed down in there. And you can go back and clean up pieces like that, but I'm not going to the edge with my glue because if you press that down, you don't want glue to come back up out of that. And see right here, I can take my sewing scissors, as long as you're not cutting through glue. And I can just clean that up super easy, no problem. But I do want these fraying for sure. Now here's the next part that makes it so magical. Okay guys, now you're gonna see how this is all going together. And once you see it, you're gonna lose your mind. See this? They're glued together glued together, back sides, inside, and then you're gonna fold that over just like that. And I put a good press in it just to make it easy. And then I'm gonna put a bead of glue, or if you're sewing, you're gonna stitch these together. Just where I'm gluing. And again, I'm not going all the way to the top, and you'll see here in a minute. And then I'm gonna take my piece, and then you'll kind of get a rhythm of lining these up a little bit better as they go um, without burning your fingers off. Okay, that's on. Go, we're gonna glue again. We're gonna fold that over. Now do you see how we're having these folds here? Can you see that? That's what's making our pumpkin. So we're gonna take another one and we're gonna line up which way that falls. Way. And we're going to put a bead of glue just along the line, not going to the edge, but making sure you have a steady stream because this will be stuffed. You don't want your stuffing coming out. Just like that. And then press to a ease. And again, you want to make sure this is completely dried before you go to the next step. Of stuffing it and then here we go again we're flipping it over and I'm gonna put another glue gun bead along here and then we're gonna add our next little panel so once you kind of get this concept oh gosh the sky's the limit you could apply this to anything really Okay, so the last one, and then I'll put this into time lapse so you guys aren't losing your mind. And we're gonna fold that back again. Do you see how this is looking on the inside? The last one going in. You want eight panels total, but if you want your pumpkin bigger, you could add more, more panels for sure. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like. And then we're gonna to go to our next step. Okay, looky here. There is your pumpkin. Look how cute. So that's gonna be the pumpkin. So then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue this side up. Now this is where you wanna be a little more careful because it's the last one so you want to make sure you have it pretty lined up and just like that we have a pumpkin guys now for the fun place to start so we have this opening i'm gonna put my hand in it so you can see now normally i let this sit overnight but since we're making these live I'm gonna go ahead and stuff it, and then we're gonna close this bottom up um, here in a minute, and I'm gonna show you how we do that. So we're gonna start stuffing. Let me get my stuff in. This is just an old pillow. This is an old pillow that I'm repurposing. It's stuffing.
Now make sure you're getting down in the bottom and those panels, that'll, that's what's gonna fill those panels out. And we're gonna trim these little ridges a little bit. So we're gonna close this one up and you can see it, it takes shape a little bit more. It looks very bizarre at the moment. Also too, by waiting overnight and letting that dry, you won't have my, the seams come apart like you just saw mine do. Okay, this would be a fun weekend project. And as I bring these up, it starts to take its shape where you can be like, okay, that's a pumpkin. Now I don't wanna make this too tight because we're gonna put one of these in there, stem. And this is an old shirt that I had that I cut up. And I think this is so sweet. This will be also sweet if you had a loved one that passed away and you have some of their shirts or sweaters. This would be a really sweet way then to give them to a, the loved one. Like I have some of my father-in-law sweaters that I was gonna make some things for the little kids. I think this would be a great way to repurpose those too. Okay guys, we're getting there. It looks kind of crazy at the moment, but don't give up hope. We're gonna do two things here in a minute. I wanna show you how I distress the edges, like here on this one. It's so cute, I just can't take this one. Um, I just take the scissors backwards and to be careful that you don't cut through the fabric. Uh, this is upholstery fabric, so it's got a little more um, toughness to it. We're gonna add the stem. I'm gonna add a little bit more stuffing too. I have some stuffing here that I bought. Let me set this aside. I got this off Amazon and I'm kind of, it took forever to get here. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how this, how this works. It's very soft. Now see how easy this would be to make it as a pillow right at this stage? You would put a covered button here, right there, and you would put a cover button back here. And we're gonna cover that seam up a little bit better and then we're gonna add a piece of fabric. But see how easy that would be? So we're gonna go ahead and fix this seam back here that I didn't glue all the way together. We're gonna take it all the way up. This is what happens when you don't let it dry all the way and then you're in there pulling on your seams. But I wanted to show you guys how to make these so maybe you can make it over the weekend. It's so fun. Make sure that's good. Now I'm gonna try to cover this so this stays somewhat flat. Some of them I've added had to because of the fabric. It kind of puckers up. I've had to add a circle like such, like that, on the bottom so he sits flat. However, I think this one might may be okay. I may add one just to finish it out. I think we'll be okay. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, he's looking pretty cute. I think all he needs now is a fabulous stem. Let me go grab that.
really fun, fast one. This will be a great one to do with your kids and we all have a coat hanger. Now, if you have another very heavy gauge wire, then use that. But I'm gonna show you how to use this. Actually, it's the hook that you hang it with. And we're gonna be using these Dollar Tree, these are my favorite, aren't they cute? Dollar Tree ornaments. And so we're gonna be mixing them. Um, and just basically, we're going to be threading it with the little hole that you put the hook in it to hang it. And we're gonna be threading that along that. How easy is this? You could sit and do this at night watching TV. You could get your kids organized in it. How fun is that? And then you just wanna kinda switch up. I alternate the colors. I'm going to be putting this into time lapse. And so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to seal this up and it'll be all ready to hang on your Halloween door. I just think this is so cute. All Dollar Tree. Okay guys, we have all of our ornaments strung onto the hanger. And you might be looking at the top and going, hey, you're missing a few. And you know what? You're right. I ran out. I ran out of these rascals. It does take quite a bit um, just for the small of a wreath if you want it full. But I took both ends and then I covered them with some duct tape. All I had was the leopard print. You know me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a big bow, um, you know, just with some maybe deco mesh and some other things to go at the top. And you'll never ever know that I'm missing some, some bulbs. So I'm gonna get started making the bow and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the final reveal. It's gonna be so cute. I'm also gonna paint this black so it doesn't look like a hanger-ish, ish-ish as much. really fun and spooky using Dollar Tree frames that you can get in the frame uh, department and they come apart. These are the kind that you put what you have in the middle and then you sandwich it in there, but we're not going to use that this way. We're actually going to try to build a box frame for something spooky that you can put on your wall for Halloween. It's coming up very quickly. I have so many projects, I've had to start doubling it up. I'm sorry to those who have asked to do them one at a time, but um, I think you'll enjoy them. So these simply come apart just with these and then they pop out. You wanna lay that aside. You will wanna retain one piece of the glass for sure. And you won't need that, so we're going to lay that aside. We're going to keep this. And then we're going to assemble this piece back into the frame, just like so. And then I am going to put a piece of little dab of glue to hold that in because I don't want it to come in and out. And we're going to add this down into the frame. We're just going to hold until that sets up. And then we're going to start assembling this. I'm going to put this back in here. And you're going to want to put your little things over it. And that really just helps keep your glass in. Okay, so you're going to take both frames. The piece of glass is put back in there. More of those little stragglers. Then you're going to take the one that has nothing in it. And we're going to 
build up the frame. We're simply gonna glue. And remember, Dollar Tree stuff is not uh, necessarily created equal. Um, so try to line it up the best you can. Um, but we have a plan for that, so not to worry. So we're gonna put a bead of glue around this. And basically we're making our own box frame. Get an E6002, whatever your heart desires. So we're gonna go ahead and get this to come down together. Okay, we're gonna go to the next step, guys, and we're gonna put something on this to cover the fact that the Dollar Tree frames do not line up. Um, again, not all Dollar Tree items are created equal but, equal, but don't worry, we have creepy cloth. And I think this is gonna be amazing on this, and it'll hide our issues and I'm going to kind of stretch this out a little bit I want you to be able to see through that there is glass under there kind of manipulate down into where you want it and you'll see here where I'm going here in a minute these frames are great to make box frames but they have been giving me a fit so we're gonna go this way you know, and sometimes our ideas of what is gonna be awesome sauce uh, turns out to not be awesome sauce. And so then you just have to uh, be flexible. And you know, that's being an artist. You guys are all artists. And I know that you've all started a project and maybe thought, mm, this isn't really how I thought it was gonna turn out. But that's okay. That gives you an opportunity to learn and expand and make it your own for sure. I'm gonna put some more glue here and just a dab here. I just want enough to kind of adhese this cloth and you'll see why here in two seconds what we're gonna use this for. It's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna give us good texture, but also hide the fact that um, our frames are wonky. This is the funny thing about Dollar Tree. This stuff is never the equal size to the other. Okay. And then I'm kind of bunching that up around the corners just to kind of cover. Okay, and I'm gonna get my scissors. I'm gonna turn this away. Again, I'm trying to use all Dollar Tree stuff. Now, Oh my gosh, this glue is killing me. It's everywhere. Lord. So then we're going to take our spider and we're going to set her down inside that. Just like that. And what I wanted to make it look like is like an apothecary frame where they have specimens of spiders and things like that. And you can still do that if you can find frames that match up. Um, I would imagine I may have to go to a like Hobby Lobby or something and get a better quality frame. But that almost mimics a spider web and so I'm very happy with that. And then you could add something down here, maybe with what kind of spider this is. So let's glue her down and then we'll do a little embellishing. And there she is. I just think this is so pretty, especially maybe if you hung it in a window and you could see through. It almost looks like a spider in a spider web. So let's find what we can put maybe to embellish a corner or something like that, and then we'll come back for the final reveal. Super easy, this is a couple bucks. This would be nice to uh, put out with your Halloween things, maybe up in a bookcase or something spooky, but I think it's a fast and easy a uh, project for sure that you could probably even do with your kids. I think we're gonna add a little leather strap to hang it. And this is simply leather uh, from Hobby Lobby. And I think this would be really cute to hang on the wall. And I think about like that. Okay, there it is with its own little leather strap. We're gonna go ahead and hang this and we're gonna go to the final reveal and show you how cute this is on the inside. All right, our third DIY today, and I'm gonna to show you how fun this is. We're gonna be using one of these um, 
This said boo on it, and I used the letters for another project. But when you flip it over, look how cute it is. It's still beautiful and intact. And I thought what we could use this for is if you've ever seen these little tiny mirrors at Dollar Tree, we could glue her on the middle of the um, spider web. And this would be really fun to hang in a bathroom for Halloween, or you could put a candle on it for the centerpiece for a table. This has so many uses. So here's the little mirrors, just like that. So you'll want to adhese her to the side, let me cut this little thing off, um, to these parts where she makes contact. So line her up how you want her, and then I'm gonna make sure she's even, even in here, sitting even. Um, so I'm going to try to, Hit these two first. Okay, and I'm gonna let her sit and then I'll come back and style her for you guys and show you what a simple, wonderful centerpiece this would be or to hang up in a bathroom would be really sweet too.